Hi, students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you live from beautiful Budapest here in Hungary. Hi, Manpreet. Hi, Mariam. Hi, Habib. Hi, Rocky Rocky. Rahul, good to see you in class. Hi, Juan Pablo Avila. Great to see so many students. Hi, Hung. All right, everyone. Today, IELTS speaking part three. It is the last, very, very last part of your exam if your speaking interview is after the sit down test. Uh, the materials today are coming from our website, aehelp.com, for academic IELTS. That's academicenglishhelp.com and general IELTShelp.com or G I E L T S help.com for the general uh, version of the exam. I'll just quickly show you our websites. They're world class portals to help you prepare for your exam. This is the academic. Click that red button to join. After you join, you get over 100 hours of video lessons a fully interactive course for your phone, tablet, PC, as well as six original practice exam. Hi, Ivna Al-Lirak, you're very welcome for the class. Um, Harpreet, 7.5 in speaking, that's fantastic, good job. All right, this is our general version of the website at gielts.help.com. Again, join there, 100 hours or more of video lessons six original tests, and an interactive course with strategies. Well worth your effort, time, and money. In the long run, you'll save lots by getting those materials. And you can use this code, LIVE20, for a 20% discount. So lots of goodies today. All right, students, if you have questions, uh, you want to send me your writing task to get a score estimate, you can send it to Adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. I will gladly uh, let you know what band level you are. You can send me your speaking as well with an MP3, and I will let you know what is your band score roughly. Most students tell us that our band score estimates are either exactly the same as what they get on the exam or maybe just a 0.5 difference. So we're pretty good at telling students what their level is. All right, everyone. So to finish the week, speaking part three, this is for everybody. Please comment, chat, do your best. Don't be shy. If I miss something that you say, don't worry about it. I'm looking at the chat constantly and looking at different students. So today, repeat, repeat, repeat. When you hear questions, and answers for speaking part three. Speaking part three comes after part two. It's important that you're calm, collected, you're thinking clearly. Don't rush into the questions or the answers. Okay. So here we go. Uh, the examiner is looking at you. They're feeling great. You're feeling great. They're asking you questions and they just said, Okay, your two minutes is up. Please pass back the card with the questions, the note paper, the pencil, and now we will continue with part three. Part three, I will ask you some more questions connected to the topic of part two. Ta -dum. Let's talk about instruments. All right, as soon as you hear that, let's talk about instruments. What should you think of? So what should be your first brilliant conception or idea in your mind? As soon as you hear this, let's talk about instruments. Thank you, Amrit. Always trying to think of something good. All right. Hello, students from all over the world. Hiba says, ah, well, how about some musical instruments? Okay, so Hiba says musical instruments. Why not? Those are instruments. Okay, uh, Cigar Nupain says, well, you can also think of computers. 
Yeah, we don't just use the word instruments in English for music. Rahul Kamodia says, uh, how about musical equipment? Uh, Rahul, just simply thinking of equipment. So synonyms for the word instruments should be coming into mind. Uh, Pradeep says political influences like political instruments. Very clever, Pradeep. That's a very different definition of the word instruments. Ah, Merlin. Kaluvilayil. Merlin. Very interesting name. Very clever answer. Uh, Merlin says, how about medical instruments? Medical. You might even think of surgical instruments. Sure. Sure. So when you think of instruments, there's much more than just uh, music, absolutely. And Supun Max says, hey, everyone, let's not forget a very simple synonym, tools. Okay, so instruments, it's another way to say equipment and tools. We have digital instruments like computers and smartphones. We have surgical instruments like syringes uh, scalpels, electroencephalograms, and the like. We have musical instruments, which are musical tools like a violin, a piano. Okay. Um, Amarjeet says, can we mention here like cultivating instruments? Like you're thinking farm tools. We wouldn't use the word instruments so much, Amarjeet, for farm tools. Uh, instruments usually, it's a very, so Amarjeet maybe is thinking, hey, what, what is the definition of instruments? So why can we say surgical instrument? Why can we say digital instrument or musical instrument? But why don't we say farm instrument, like farming instruments? Why don't, that's weird English. We don't say that. Okay. What do you think is the definition of instrument then? If we can't say farming instrument, we can say farming tool but we can't say farming instrument, then how do you think people in English use the word instrument? What's the deeper definition of that word? Perhaps not just thinking about it as a tool, but thinking about it as a delicate or precise tool, okay? Um, so tools that take precision, that take training, that are delicate, like a musical instrument or like a surgical scalpel, okay, or like a digital phone, uh, those are instruments. Instruments tend to have multiple parts, yes, Roshni, and they tend to be delicate and precise. They don't take large movements like a hammer or like an axe, okay? And they're often special purposed. That's right. So that's how you can think about it. So when you hear this speaking topic, let's talk about instruments. All of those beautiful uh, ideas should come into mind. Lena Naji says, a microscope. Yeah, Lena Naji, a microscope would be a laboratory instrument or a research instrument. It's another one. Okay. All right. So we can keep going. It's a nice big topic for sure. But all of those are good examples, okay? Students, if vocabulary is new, write it down. So the examiner starts up with their first question. What are different types of instruments people use for work or entertainment? Give me a nice full sentence answer for that one. So what are different types of instruments? I'm sure you can think of a few now. Uh, people use for work and entertainment. Give me a full sentence answer. I'll do the same. Well, for enjoyment, people use all kinds of musical instruments to play songs like a piano or violin. And for work these days, many people 
use digital instruments like laptops or laptop computers as I just did a couple as I just did yesterday to answer my colleagues emails all right there it is so Lovepreet Singh says there are various kinds of equipment individuals use these days for instance musical computers surgical mobile phone I think surgical equipment are more difficult to use because it can oh Lovepreet you're going overboard don't do that uh, you won't hear the second question uh, until you answer the first one, okay? Um, Lovepreet, if you want a high band score, go into detail. Make sure you answer the question exactly. The key here is for work and for entertainment. If you don't have that in your answer, your band score is going down, okay? Because you're not answering specifically. I'm not asking you what types of instruments do people use, the question does not stop there. The question continues with these two elements. You have to be precise. That's how you get good band scores. Okay. All right. Kartik Joshu says, people in our region mainly use electronic instruments to make life easier or relaxing, such as laptops. Ooh, Kartik, I'm not asking you about making life easier or relaxing. I'm talking about making life entertaining and doing work. Again, you're answering off topic, your band score is going down. Okay. Rahul Kamodia says, computers, mobile phones, and headphones are used at my work, and musical instruments like the piano, guitar, and speakers are used for entertainment purposes or for having fun. Relaxing and having fun are not necessarily the same, Rahul. So same idea. Be really careful not to go off topic, okay? Uh, I'm not asking you about relaxation. You have to be more specific. You have to use the question in your answer. All right, uh, Hassan Rafshanov says, well, generally, there are a bunch of different tools people utilize for uh, working and entertainment purposes like laptops and microphones. All right, Hassan, that's better. So you got work and entertain in there. It's fine. Uh, there are other ways you can say work. You can say to complete their job or to help them uh, with their job. Uh, sure. So paraphrase. Uh, as much as possible. Hassan, I like your expression, by the way. There are a bunch of different tools. Bunch of is colloquial, but it's good English. Okay, you'll get points for that in the speaking. Ferdovs Nabiev says, nowadays humans not only have been using uh, mostly cell phones and laptops to unwind from the stresses of everyday life, but also during working hours for answering emails, communicating, and so you have to finish that for Dobbs, okay? And again, careful, relaxing. Yeah, it's a little bit far from entertainment. Okay, uh, Amrit Bogan says, people use a variety of equipment for work and entertainment. People work uh, in different jobs. Some technologists use instruments for element detection. Uh, for example, like a metal detector, Amrit. On the other hand, uh, some people enjoy. Okay, Amrit, careful not to lose yourself in wordiness. Students, you want to target the question. Don't talk too much. Just give a clear answer to the specific question with explanation and example. Take a look at my answer. Well, for enjoyment, right away. So I'm targeting entertainment right there, boom. Okay, so well, for enjoyment, the examiner finishes with this word. I start with this word. Okay, that's very, very good for coherence. Guess what? Your score is going up and to the moon. Okay, so well, for enjoyment, people use all kinds of musical instruments to play songs like a piano or violin. 
And for work, these days, many people use digital instruments like laptop computers, as I just did yesterday to answer my colleagues' emails. There you go. Exactly answering the question, giving a nice, smooth flowing example, and paraphrasing specifically the original question. That's what you need to do to get those high band seven, eight, nine scores. Okay, that's the key. That's the key. So keep this in mind uh, as we move to the next questions. Okay, uh, you have to answer the specific question. So let me put it to you this way, okay? How do I get a band nine? Number one, you have to answer the question specifically. Okay, number two, explain yourself. Number three, Give a smooth flowing example. Okay, that's the key. All right, and paraphrase as much as possible. That is it in a nutshell. So again, repeat after me. This is a speaking class. Okay, so repeat after me nice and loud. What are different types of instruments people use for work or entertainment? Well, for enjoyment, people use all kinds of musical instruments to play songs like a piano or violin. And for work, these days, many people use digital instruments like laptop computers, as I just did yesterday, to send my colleagues some emails. Uh, which of these are the most difficult to use and why? Okay, give me a nice answer for that one. Which of these are the most difficult to use and why? Again, students, members, if I don't catch all of your comments, don't worry about it. I'll get to different people at different times, but we do want to keep moving ahead in the class, okay? So just do your best, all right? Kartik Joshu says, from my opinion, the most difficult instrument to utilize are musical instruments as everyone can't use those kinds of tools without any specialization in it. Okay, Kartik, not bad. A little bit confusing, a little bit of redundancy, but you're on the right track. Okay, uh, maybe use some quantitative language to explain yourself better. Use some uh, numbers, Kartik, like uh, it takes a person at least 10 years of dedicated training to master playing the violin okay so 10 years of training to master the violin or the piano uh, as where a person can learn to use the computer in just one year okay so kartik use numbers quantify quantify all right uh 24 creative says well difficult or simple always depends upon personal skill I feel comfortable with musical instruments because I love songs. Okay, uh, you're kind of not answering the question, 24 Creative. You're giving me a very gray type of answer. Um, another tip, students, and I'll look at a few more in a second, but another really good tip for the speaking section of the IELTS exam is be decisive, okay? Be decisive. Um, it means choose black or white, yes or no. Don't sit on the fence, that's the idiom. It means don't be in indecisive. Okay, nobody... Nobody really likes the gray zone. People don't really like the gray zone. So don't use phrases or avoid them like, uh, it depends, or, well, 
there are both positive and negative. Okay. Nah, yeah, we know the world is gray. That's fine. Uh, just avoid it, okay? In the exam, be decisive. So say computers are more difficult to use. Nobody's judging you. The examiner is not going to say, oh, I don't think so. Oh, musical instruments are way harder to use. Have you ever tried playing the guitar? Uh, uh, no, they're not going to do that, okay? You have the right to your opinion. Just make sure it is an opinion. So if you think computers are more difficult to use, say it. If you think musical instruments are more difficult to use, say it. Just don't say, well, it depends. Some people like computers. Some people, nah, you get into trouble. You get into confusing vocabulary, opinions, even if you're a native speaker, even in your own language, that can be confusing, okay? So be decisive. All right, let's get back to it. Um, I'll read some more. Satisfying Times says the hardest ones uh, in my experience are medical instruments as they need a wide, uh, as they need years of training and education uh, in order to use them correctly. Uh, for instance, using uh, an electrocardiogram needs at least a few years of uh, schooling and training. Uh, okay, satisfying times, that's okay. Just make sure that in the previous question you talk about um, the medical instruments. I didn't. I talked about musical instruments like the violin and I talked about digital instruments like the computer. So when it, the examiner says which of these are the more di most difficult to use, I shouldn't introduce a new idea like medical instruments because that will be confusing. It's incoherent, okay? So I'll answer, and then I'll look at a few of yours. Okay, a few more. So which of these are the most difficult to use and why? Uh, I believe that uh, musical devices are much more challenging to use well than digital tools as they require years of training training and dedicated practice to master at a level where it becomes enjoyable. However, just a few weeks on a computer and a person can become an apt user. Okay, so again, quantitative language. Uh, that's another point here that I'm emphasizing. Uh, I'm using numbers, okay? So I believe that musical devices are much more challenging to use well um, compared to digital tools as they require years of training and dedicated practice to master to a level where it becomes enjoyable. However, just a few weeks on a computer and a person can become an apt user. Repeat after me, always students, when I'm reading these sentences, okay? So again, one more time, I believe that musical devices are much more challenging to use well compared to digital tools, okay? As they require years of training and dedicated practice to master at a level where it becomes enjoyable. However, just a few weeks on a computer and a person can become an apt user. Apt means they can get by. Okay, they can use it. All right. Um, Shish Gurba, uh, Garbuya says, according to me, musical instruments are the most difficult because they need a talent for music and years of dedication to master. Okay, Shush, that's good. Notice the corrections there. Hassan says, and Bob's your uncle. Indeed, Hassan. 
Uh, Navrit Grawal says, I suppose that musical instruments are considered more challenging because they need a greater dedication, uh, such as the piano, which is one of the most difficult musical devices due to the uh, notes, the plethora of notes to learn and play. Okay, Navrit, good. Students, you're doing a great job, okay? I'm just picking at you, with you. I'm trying to get the best out of you. Don't give up, okay? Just keep typing. Keep putting those comments out there. That's how you learn, all right? That's how you learn. So the fifth tip on how to get a band nine is use quantitative language. That means numbers to clearly explain your reasoning okay it's very powerful using numbers it's very very powerful that's why we use numbers in society to bring balance and order to chaos like money systems okay all right um here is the next question If people spend much time to play a musical instrument, will they become a very good musician? Okay, if people spend much time to play a musical instrument, will they become a very good musician? Ferdov says, sure, if individuals play many hours a week, they will use it professionally as said practice is the mother of teaching. Uh, Ferdov's great. I like it. Okay, I like your answer. It's fantastic. Satisfying Time says, although repetition makes perfection, when it comes to musical instruments, this will make a person fairly good, but for the best skills, a person needs to be gifted because music is also about talent satisfying times talent okay um invention is not the right word satisfying times um you're um thinking of improv improvisation satisfying times not inventing but improvisation music is about improvisation it means creating ideas as you're moving along like stand-up comedians or improv comedians improvisation okay all right, Lovepreet says, yes, if they spend more and more time to practice, they can achieve uh, accuracy. For example, uh, a person became a well-known musician because hard work is the key to success. All right, Lovepreet, I think your example is a little bit off. Don't say, for example, uh, give us a name. Just like, and then Justin Timberlake, who practiced a lot and eventually became... Uh, dancer, musician, uh, something like that, Love Preet, okay? So uh, say like or just as, all right? Morteza J says, um, all famous musicians that become great artists in the world have uh, a lot of training in their life. Uh, I know many musicians that reached a high level of technique by spending hours a day uh, with uh, their musical instruments uh such as and then just give us a name of a musician uh let's uh pick a famous one for today elton john on the piano singing and uh, of course he's very famous these days i think he's being remembered more because of the lion king movie right lion king movie all right the circle of life by elton john and the lion king all right let's take a couple more uh Mir Jalal Umur Zokuov says, my answer would be definitely no. Some people might spend hundreds of hours to learn music while others are able to catch up in just a few days. Okay, Mir Jalal, it's an honest answer. Will it get you a high band score? No. Students, honesty isn't always the best practice for high scores on the exam. Take the easy road. Okay, the easy road might just sometimes be a little bit of BS. So just coming up with some false ideas, but easy ideas. I would go with a yes here as well. Okay, it's the easy answer. 
Yes, I do believe that practice makes perfect. So, when a person dedicates five hours a day, seven days a week, for five years to master, to get really good at playing the violin, then they will. Although it's not easy, as I had mentioned in my previous response, people can become good with lots of hard work. Okay? All right, so what am I doing here to get my band nine? Well, we have to go back a little bit and take a look at my previous answer. My previous answer was, I believe musical devices are much more challenging to use. They require years of training and dedicated practice, okay, where it's enjoyable. So I said that previously. Now, I'm actually linking my answers, okay? Notice a couple of interesting points. Here, it's a conditional question. If people spend much time, will they become very good? If this, then will they? Okay, condition. If the condition is set, does this happen? My answer, yes. Practice makes perfect. So when a person, when is a real condition, when a person dedicates five hours a day, immediately I'm going to a quantitative measure. Seven days a week for five years to get really good at playing the violin, then they will. Although it's not easy, as I had mentioned in my previous response, people can become good with lots of hard work. It's natural. It's quantifiable. It's clear. It connects with my previous answers. Band nine. Okay, that's how you get band nines. So let's add that to our list of points for how do I get a band nine? Connect information to increase your coherence score. Okay, so connect information among answers to increase your coherence score. That's how you get closer to that magical, seemingly impossible band nine, all right? Okay, uh, so let's go to the follow-up question. Again, we're moving along nicely here. Um, can you elaborate on this? Can you elaborate on this? Oh, what? You want me to tell you more about this? Sure thing, okay? You can always elaborate. You can always go into more detail. and You don't have to overthink it, okay? So can you elaborate on this means, well, can you tell me more about this, okay? So tell me more about it. Tell me more about your belief that with lots of hard work, people can master playing a musical instrument, okay? So tell me a little bit more. Elaborate on it. So Shivam Pandya says, yes, of course, music is much more about talent and with talent it needs practice and practice makes perfect. So having talent and practicing more will be enough to be a good musician. Sure, Shivam, that'll work. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Lovepreet Singh goes into a nice example. Yes, in my country, uh, the singer Sidhu has become famous due to her hard work, optimism and passion. Um, his enormous victory. Okay, Lovepreet, you have a gender mismatch. So you start with her and then you continue with his. Be careful. That's confusing. You lose marks. So if it's a she, then stay with her. Her enormous victory is that she has uh, a big achievement for her young age. Okay, 
or if it's a he, then make sure it's a he before. Okay, do to his. All right. Amrit Bogan says, how can we avoid overthinking? It's a good question, Amrit. Uh, think about what nine from 10 people would say. Practice not overthinking at home. Practice just giving simple answer, explanation, example. If you give an overly complex answer, Amrit, stop yourself. Go back. Try to do it again in a simpler way. Okay? It is challenging, Amrit. I always tell students, simple is difficult in many cases. Okay, it's challenging. Ferdov says, well, when I was a student at music school before the exam, I spent over 100 hours to play Beethoven's song, and I got an A+, and my parents were proud of me. Sure, yeah, examples are a great way to elaborate. Definitely. Um, certainly. Most famous musicians are known to dedicate at least 10 hours each day to practice their art. I know that Jennifer Lopez spends an average of five hours practicing singing and another five hours playing the piano. I don't know that, I'm just making it up, but it doesn't matter, okay? You can name any musician, you can call it your friend or whoever. Um, Examples are details. So when somebody says, can you elaborate on this? Giving a detailed example is an elaboration of your explanation. So certainly most famous musicians are known to dedicate at least 10 hours each day to practice their art. I know that Jennifer Lopez spends an average of five hours practicing singing, another five hours playing the piano. Okay. That will work. Okay, that will work. All right. Um, I'll read a couple more for this. So Sagar Nupain says, as I said previously, spending more time on um, training will definitely yield rewards. Like a local band in my hometown is hitting the national scene because of their dedicated effort for the past six years, tirelessly playing concerts all over the town. Okay. Uh, Alvina Salim Zahnova, our uh, member, says, For instance, Elton John has been training and started uh, playing in a small group before he became a popular musician. He has dedicated thousands of hours to mastering the piano and singing. It proves that long-term dedication will yield benefits one day. Okay, Alvina, don't switch to you. Avoid the you, students. Okay, the you. All right. Good job, everyone. Yeah, Amrit, you can give false information about real musicians. Sure. Uh, the IELTS examiners do not care whether the information is true or false as long as it is believable. If it's strange or awkward, if it's unbelievable, then you can lose marks because it sounds incoherent. So be careful. Okay. All right. Let's do a little bit more. The examiner is very satisfied with your fluency, with your ability to answer questions. So they go into another topic related to part two and they'll say, okay, uh, let's talk a little bit more about specialized training. Let's talk a little bit more about specialized training. So get ready to talk more on a related topic to part two, maybe not quite the same subject, it's not going to be instruments, but it will be related. I mean, we talked about instruments, but we did talk about training. We talked about training for music. Okay. So the first let's talk about yada yada. And the second let's talk about yada yada are not completely strange from each other. Keep that in mind. 
Okay, there is a connection there. All right. Amrit says, and Amrit, I know Amrit, you just did the exam, right? And you said, I got two topics as well in section three. Amrit, um, that's a good sign if you got two topics in section three, because that means you were doing a good job and the examiner felt confident to get another topic going. Um, so that's usually a good sign uh, when they switch into a second topic for part three. Okay. All right. Um, so first question, what are different skills that people seek professional training for outside of regular school? So what are different skills that people seek professional training for outside of regular school? So answer that question for me. Again, you won't get the follow up until you answer that first question. Okay. Amarjeet, answer for this one and I promise I'll check it out, okay? I don't want to jump back. It's confusing for students. Uh, Navreet, no, you don't just give examples in part three. You answer, explain, and often include an example, okay? In part one, same idea. It should always be a direct answer, specific, with an explanation. In most cases, you have to give a reason, Okay, up 20 will, the speaking for academic and for general, it's the same. In both cases, you have to speak clearly, coherently, naturally, using complex English. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's general or academic. Uh, Juan Pablo Avila says, a lot of people look for guitar lessons because they think it's easy and entertaining. I think rock stars are responsible for this. Uh, Juan Pablo, okay, I like it. You're teetering on going kind of off topic, but yeah, it's very specific. It's good, okay? Uh, Naval Preet, I'm not sure what you're asking. Send me an email later, okay? Uh, Love Preet Singh says, these days individuals search for professional training aside from their school because with practical work, they learn... Uh, easily and well. These things are learning sports and singing. Love, Preet, your answer is coming way too late. You might get interrupted. Uh, so these skills, not things, these skills. Satisfying Time says, hmm, that's a difficult question. Sports and graphic design skills are very demanded because they need to be taught in the right way. That's a bit awkward, Satisfying Times. I don't think this is a very difficult question. I think there are lots of easy answers for this, so careful. Rumel Hussein says, amid many skills, I believe driving is the most prominent among the young generation as the demand and number of vehicles is increasing every day. So learning how to drive is definitely a skill that we learn outside of school, Rumel. Good for identifying that one. Now, it is asking for plural. What are different skills? Uh, you got to give at least a couple, Rumel. So driving is good, but it's not good enough if you want band nine. Okay, you have to give me more. Shivam, you're not answering the question. Nowadays, schools are more focusing on completing a syllabus. Um, so eh, you're, I'm not asking you about what school is uh, focusing on. Okay. Rahul Kamodia says there are various types of training. We don't use plural for training, Rahul. There are various types of training people uh, seek, uh, such as accounting skills, uh, graphic design, uh, driving, music. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sure. So I'll give you an answer. Okay. Um, well, many people... Certainly, uh, seek or search to learn musical skills like playing the guitar as an extra curricular activity. You'll definitely pick up some points for using extracurricular. Extra means outside. Curricular means the curriculum of school. I think somebody used that in the chat earlier. I saw it come up. 
So, well, many people certainly search to learn musical skills like playing the guitar as an extracurricular activity. Aside from this, uh, people uh, acquire training in sports, learn to operate vehicles, and paint pictures. This is because most schools don't teach these in class and people either enjoy doing them or it is necessary for their daily life. Okay. All right. So here we go again. Plural, different skills. Try to paraphrase as much as possible, students, as much as possible. Repeat after me, okay? What are different skills that people seek professional training for outside of regular school? Well, many people certainly search to learn musical skills like playing the guitar as an extracurricular activity. Aside from this, people acquire training in sports, learn to operate vehicles, and paint pictures. This is because most schools don't teach these in class and people enjoy doing them, either enjoy doing them or it is necessary for their daily life, okay? Uh, here I have this either or. Uh, using these correlative conjunctions, it's still, I see these too rarely among uh, the IELTS students. So students use however, therefore, since, because, as a result, uh, and, but, so. Uh, those are uh, coordinating conjunctions. Um, their uh, additive expressions, their subordinating conjunctions. But don't forget about your uh, friendly, beautiful, uh, what's called correlative conjunctions. Those will help you to reach the band nine level. Okay? So, again, Remember, another tip to get band nine in your speaking, use correlative conjunctions to emphasize connections among ideas. So either, or, neither, nor, not only, but also, whether, or both and that is a few there for you okay make sure to use those alvina says i would say that people search for foreign language learning um drawing or cooking for instance i uh use a online course regularly uh to prepare for my ielts exam uh, namely on the website aehelp.com. Thank you, Alvina, for letting me put that plug in there. <laughs> but no, Alvina, that was good, okay? Um, sorry for putting words in your mouth um, or uh, putting uh, extra information on your comment. Um, but I was an opportunist. Uh, Roshni says, uh, people uh, require expert training to convey messages to their audience clearly. Uh, through music without lyrics, which is difficult to obtain and requires seven to eight hours per day practice. Okay, Roshni, I think you're answering that follow-up uh, question there, okay? Um, Sudhar Akira says, many people learn out of school, such as driving or swimming, guitar, uh, and I'm speaking from personal experience because I also uh, take swimming classes on the weekends. Okay, cool. All right. All right, students, so let's uh, review uh, the band nine. 
How to get band 9. What do you need to do? Yes, you need to have good vocabulary. You need to be what's called an expert user of the English language. You do not need to be a native speaker to get a band 9. In fact, many native speakers won't get a band 9 on the exam because they make many of the same mistakes that non-native speakers make. They go off topic. They don't answer the question specifically, completely, coherently. Being an expert user of a language doesn't simply mean sounding uh, native and using a lot of vocabulary and grammar. It means being a good communicator. Okay, that's the key, being a good communicator. All right, so to get a band nine, you have to answer the questions specifically. Explain yourself. Give a smooth flowing example to back up your ideas. Paraphrase as much as possible. That shows your understanding and your level of ability. Use quantitative language. Use numbers to clearly explain your reasoning, your ideas. Connect information between and among your answers Okay, to increase your coherence score. Use a range of conjunctions, okay? Uh, don't just use coordinating and subordinating. Use correlative. Emphasize your connections, all right? That's how you do it. Students, there are a couple more questions here for you. When is it a good time in a person's life to develop new skills and get expert tutoring? Can you give some examples? How have training methods improved over the past 30 years to help people use instruments? How will training improve in future years? I will leave these last couple of questions and follow-up questions for you to work on over the next couple of days. Uh, the next live IELTS class will be on Wednesday at this time. Make sure to join. That will be speaking part one. It's usually how we start the week. Until then, record these answers on, an M on your phone in MP3. Send them to my email, and I'll give you a score estimate. I'll let you know what your band score is. Adrian at aehelp.com. That's the email. To save yourself a lot of headache to improve your band scores quickly, spend a couple dollars. Go to aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Join the premium package there. Or... For general, check out GIELTSHelp.com. Join the premium package there by clicking that red button on that green background. Uh, blue background is the academic. Click that there. Um, Kartik, you can get a discount. Uh, I just mentioned it. Uh, here it is. Uh, sorry, maybe I didn't. Uh, Live 20, L-I-V-E 20, you get a 20% discount. That's a promotion that we have going right now, Kartik. So just uh, type, you'll see in the checkout form, there's a place where you can click uh, coupon code and then you can enter LIV20 there to get that discount. All right, super cool students, super, super cool. Everybody did a really great job. I love the effort today. Lots of answers, lots of vocabulary, lots of sharing. Sharing is definitely one way to uh, improve our knowledge and improve ourselves. So good for you for committing, for being confident. Thank you so much. I look forward to teaching you next week, starting on Wednesday. Much love to all of you. Have a great rest of your day. Sweet dreams if it's late in your country. Bye for now.